In this video, we're going to be talking about the function node. The function node is one of the most powerful nodes that is available in N8N. The function node uses JavaScript to access other nodes, manipulate data, or perform more complicated tasks that aren't available in other nodes. One of the things that you will notice about the function node is that it only has one property, and in that property is where you put all of your JavaScript code. One of the most important things to understand about using the function node is how it views data within the workflow. Information is stored in a workflow in an array called items. Once a node has finished performing its tasks, it then stores the results of those tasks in the items array. The items array for that node is then available to be referenced by other nodes. By connecting two nodes together, you automatically set the start value of the second node's item array to the end value of the first node's item array. Each items array have one or more JSON objects. Each object has at minimum a property named JSON, which contains a JSON object itself. It is in this last JSON object that information is stored as JSON formatted data. There is also an optional binary object that can be created as well. If you use this binary object, you need to include at minimum a data property and value, which is base64 binary encoded data. It is also good practice to include the MIME type, file extension, and file name properties along with their values as well to produce the most complete output information. In the N8N editor UI, the items array is represented in the right side of the open node interface. When the node is executed, this array is displayed using two or three tabs at the top of the open node interface. The first two tabs represent the JSON data in the items array in two different formats. The JSON tab shows the data in JSON format, while the table tab displays the JSON data as a data table. Please note that the information that is presented in these two tabs is identical. It is just formatted differently. Occasionally, you will see a third tab. This binary tab will show up if the optional binary object is included in the items array. Now that we have the data piece out of the way, let's continue with the function node. Let's take a simple node, the set node, and see what it takes to reproduce the functionality of the set node in the function node. The purpose of the set node is to assign values to a property. There are three different kinds of properties available to the set node, number, string, and boolean. To replicate the default output of the function node using the set node, we create a number property. Give the property the name of my variable and then assign the value of 1 to that property. We can now execute the set node and we see that we get a JSON output showing that the property my variable has a value of 1. If we close the set node and then open the function node, when we execute the function node, we notice that the output from the function node is identical to the output of the set node. Now, let's add another property to each of the nodes. This time, we are going to create a string property in our set node first. We name the property myString and give it a value of cat. And when we execute the node, this is the JSON string that we get from it. Let's reproduce this using the function node. We open up the function node and open up the JavaScript code field. Add a line between the first and last lines to create the myString property and assign it the value of cat. Let's break this down to understand a bit better what it is doing. The term items is referring to the items array that we mentioned earlier. This is where the information is stored from the workflow. The zero in square brackets is referring to the first JavaScript object in the array. Why is it a zero instead of a one? Because arrays in JavaScript start their index count at zero and go up from there. The dot is a separator which breaks up the entire command into different member sections. There are two dots in this string indicating that there are three parts to the object reference. JSON refers to the JSON property of the first object in the items array. This is the required property for the N8N workflow. 
The myString is a subproperty in the JSON property. It does not exist presently, so it will be created when the command is executed. The equal sign indicates that what follows is a value that will be assigned to the property represented by the previous string. The value in double quotes is the value that will be assigned. The semicolon indicates that this is the end of the line. You can now close the JavaScript field editor and execute the function node. As you can see, the output is identical to that of the set node. That concludes our video on the function node. Thank you for watching.